work.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ryan Fleener. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's, and on behalf of this whole parish, welcome to those who are joining in worship, both here in the church and through the gift of our live stream technology, as we celebrate this the sixth Sunday after Pentecost and observe our Independence Day holiday together. As we prepare our hearts to worship God this day, I invite you to stand for an opening prayer. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we will be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, hymn 636. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joses, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. 
May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the modern world, and particularly in our Western culture, it's become increasingly common over the last several decades to venture further and further away from one's hometown, either to pursue academic and career goals or to achieve a better quality of life. Of course, ease of travel, cars, airplanes, trains, They've all made it easier for us to venture further away, and they've also enabled us to return back home when we want to. The pandemic, of course, has taught us that we cannot always take that connectedness, that physical connectedness, for granted. It's not always possible or safe to stay physically connected. In Jesus' time, it was much less common to venture away from one's ancestral home. The rudeness of a family in a particular place, likely in the midst of a larger extended family, was common. And children did not venture too far from home except on certain occasions. Jesus, he was born into such an arrangement in the midst of family. And yet we might say that he falls into the category of leaving home to follow his career ambitions. This was yet another way that Jesus upended expectations and norms. Scripture tells us that Jesus' ministry took him to cities all over, Galilee and Judea. But in today's Gospel lesson, he returns to his hometown of Nazareth. He returns there having performed many miracles elsewhere, including healing two women, which we heard about last Sunday. And while he may have had success elsewhere, Jesus has met with ridicule and resistance in Nazareth. To begin with, when he teaches in the synagogue, we're told that the people were astounded. They weren't particularly interested in listening to him and instead ridiculed him. And it's easy to miss just how sharp their insult was. The crowds noted that Jesus was this guy who was born without a father in a scandalous way to a woman named Mary. We remember that story from Christmas, of course. They note that he has no lineage on his father's side, a deep insult in that culture. Despite performing great acts of power, healings, miracles, all of that elsewhere, Jesus could do nothing of the sort in Nazareth. We're told he could only heal a few people, which is something, of course, but nothing of the sort that he was doing elsewhere. I've been thinking about why it is that Jesus was met with such resistance. And it revolves around these two things. It revolves around the assumptions and the expectations that people have. You see, last Sunday, in the stories of the two women being healed, they both expected Jesus to heal them. They had heard who Jesus was. They had heard his powerful teaching and preaching. They had heard stories from the other places about all the wonderful things that this amazing man was doing. Their minds were open to the possibility of what could happen with him, with God. Their lives were open to God being at work in them and through them. But it was not so in Nazareth. The people in Jesus' hometown thought that they knew who Jesus was. They thought that he was just a lowly kid born to a carpenter and a woman named Mary, that he ran around with this crazy guy named John the Baptist and a bunch of other guys, fishermen and those types. What could he possibly have to offer them? Jesus is a prophet. And prophets come not to uphold what is, but to proclaim what might be. They are not bound by custom or comfort, 
and instead come to unsettle our ideas, to dare people to imagine new ways of seeing the world. Now contrast the situation in Nazareth with the remainder of today's gospel passage, where we see how quickly and how easily Jesus' message and power multiplied in the surrounding towns, towns that were open to his message, warm hearts, open minds, open arms to the life-changing invitation that he was offering. The only people that seemed to be left out of the work were those that weren't open to this possibility, this potential. Whether they were the friends and relatives back in Nazareth, whoever they were, they weren't open to that possibility of what Jesus might be providing. They were trying to relegate Him, relegate God's activity to the narrow confines of their own expectations. In the remainder of the passage, though, Jesus and the twelve disciples, they go out into those surrounding villages and towns, and Jesus tells the disciples that if a place won't listen to them, they should leave that place behind, shaking the dust off their feet as they leave. In other words, if people are too stubborn, even after you've tried your best to convince them, move on. There's a great deal of work to be done elsewhere and a great deal of people who are, in fact, willing to listen and join the growing Jesus movement. According to the story, the disciples must have been well-received in those surrounding villages. They were able to perform numerous other miracles and healings, indicating that the people were bold enough to believe that Jesus was who he said he was, bold enough to expect healing and wholeness, bold enough to lean into a better way of living. They were not closed-minded about what God might be doing, what Jesus was up to, but they were open. They were open to the movement of God in their lives, open to joining God and working towards wholeness and relationship, open to following God wherever they were led. And thanks be to God for that. My friends, may we also, in our own time, here and now, be bold enough to expect Jesus to do as he says he will do. May we assume that he is who he says he is. And may we always welcome him into our lives, into our homes, with open arms, with open minds about what is possible. May Christ never need to shake the dust off of his feet in our presence on account of our refusal to welcome him as a prophet, as our Messiah, as our friend, and as our God. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. that we all may be one. That your name may be glorified by all people. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, devoutly kneeling. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Please be seated. Again, what a joy it is to be able to welcome you on this Sunday and this holiday weekend. We're so glad to be able to be together. And if you are perhaps joining us for the first time, we are especially glad that you have joined us. Those of you here in the church, uh, hopefully received on your way in this insert, it has lots of information about our life together. Those joining online can find that in our weekly e-news. There is a lot to lift up, even though it's summertime. The first is a special thank you to all those who helped make our Vacation Bible School possible this past week. We had a wonderful time with 75 of our youngest parishioners learning stories of our faith and how we are growing in God. And it was a great joy to be together after not being able to be together last year. So thank you to all our volunteers. An invitation for this coming Friday in the front circle, Friday evening, our own Merrill Collins Peterkin will be leading us in a concert to benefit our friends of music. So I hope you'll join us for a time of good music and fellowship this Friday evening. An invitation to all of our youth to uh, sign up if you have not yet done so for our local service trips later this month at the end of July. There's a week for middle schoolers and a week for high schoolers. If you'd like to learn more, contact Naomi Cunningham or Derek. There is also a reception toward the end of this month for all the women in this parish. We had a Father's Day barbecue and now it's the ladies' turn uh, in the backyard of the rectory. So I hope you will plan to join us on the 22nd for that. One Finally. last thing, one last thing to lift up, I think, is you yourself. We, could everybody stand as we sing a happy birthday to our Independence Day boy? You know how to make me blush. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Please be seated. <laughs> the most important thing today is God's presence among us as we celebrate the Lord's day and as he comes to make himself known at this altar. As we come now to communion, please know that all who desire Christ this day are welcome to receive him here at the altar rail. There will be stations on either side. Please do come forward, continuing to wear your mask. And when you receive... Uh, the consecrated bread in your open palms, you can step to the side and pull down your mask and receive. But what a joy it is to be able to be here, not just on my birthday, but on this Lord's Day. So as we continue our worship of God, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. 
body of Christ. Blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Are we done? Okay, we're done. I'm like, wait, wait. We done. We done. Thanks again. Thank fun. you. Yeah, thanks. I just love looking over at you. It's like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> it is summer. It's I summer. do not apologize. No, no, are you kidding? Please don't apologize. No, no, no. no. I'm laughing because I'm thinking I'm wearing my red, you know, orange toes. I'm looking at Susan's beautiful conservative shoes. I'm like, oh, that's, I'm not going to worry. You know, I flew okay. out of the candles. It's, it's very, very